The iPad 2. Released in 2011, it was the second generation of Apple's iPad line, succeeding and drastically improving upon the original iPad from the year before. But one question remains, does this device still have any uses today, 9 years later? Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Thomas, and today we're going to be looking at this, the iPad 2. How does this 9 year old device hold up in 2020? The iPad 2 was released in March of 2011 as a replacement to the original iPad. While the first generation was incredible for the time and holds significance to this day for revolutionising the tablet industry, the iPad 2 retained what the original iPad introduced and added even more features to make it even better. The iPad 2 brought a completely new design over its predecessor while still using aluminium for the build. It has a completely flat back with curved metal edges that meet the front glass and this curve is what gives it an illusion of being thinner than it really is. Speaking of which, the iPad 2 has a thickness of 8.8 millimeters and weighs 600 grams and while it is far from being the thinnest or lightest iPad it still looked sleek and modern back in 2011 which is what mattered. The design was so good in fact that it was reused twice with the iPad 3 and 4 both released the following year. The iPad 2 came in two colors white and black the only difference between the two being the color of the very thick glass bezels surrounding the display. Also it's worth mentioning that the iPad 2 came in two models Wi-Fi only and Wi-Fi plus cellular which can connect to 3G network with a SIM card. The cellular model also included a black antenna strip on the back of the device so it's easy to identify. The iPad 2 features a 9.7 inch display which was the standard size all the way up to and including the 6th generation iPad from 2018. The display size is still pretty acceptable today however the quality of the display itself isn't. It features a resolution of 1024 by 768 with a pixel density of 132 pixels per inch. Unfortunately this is not one of Apple's finest displays rather it is one of their worst. Pictures and text tend to look very blurry and pixelated and can be hard on the eyes to look at after a while. To be fair, this was only less than a year after the Retina display debuted on the iPhone 4 and Apple did give the iPad lineup justice the following year with the iPad 3. On the bottom of the iPad we'll find a speaker grill and the old 30 pin dock connector. On the right there's a mute switch and volume rockers and on the top, hey you guessed it, a headphone jack. The left hand side also features magnets which allows you to connect accessories such as a smart cover which I have here. It also supports up to the wireless N Wi-Fi standard and if you get the cellular model you can connect to 3G networks provided you have a plan and a SIM card. The iPad's battery is surprisingly decent and despite most of these devices being heavily used over the years, batteries still tend to hold up alright today. It's shipped with a 6944 mAh battery and this huge battery is partly why the iPad's pretty chunky. My device in particular can usually last over a week with moderate daily use and even when I put it away in the drawer for often months at a time it always seems to hold charge the next time I turn it on. However, other devices will probably be more heavily used than mine, but the battery should at least get you through the day regardless. The iPad 2 was the first iPad to include cameras of any kind and it featured two of them, if you can even call them cameras. The rear camera takes 0.7 megapixel photos and records video in what Apple claims is 720p. Photos and videos look absolutely garbage and even in bright outdoor locations, photos are a grainy horrible mess. Videos look horrible too and I don't understand how Apple had the nerve to call it high definition. The front facing camera is even worse. It takes 0.3 megapixel photos and records VGA quality video aka 480p. I love it how Apple didn't even bother giving you any fancy names to make it sound better than it really is. However, unlike the rear camera, the front facing camera was relatively new for the time, being introduced less than a year previously on the iPhone 4, and all it was intended for was FaceTime, which is about all you should really be using it for anyway. On the other hand, I think the rear camera should have received a 3 megapixel sensor from the iPhone 3GS at the very least, or even better, the 5 megapixel camera from the iPhone 4. Then again, iPads aren't really meant for taking photos anyway, as you not only look stupid doing so, but most people have smartphones on them at all times that they can use to take photos instead. And why would you carry your iPad around everywhere you went when you could just use your phone? The iPad 2 features Apple's dual core A5 chip and 512 megabytes of RAM, pretty much the same as the iPhone 4S, the original iPad mini and the iPod Touch 5. It was the first device to utilize the A5 and it claimed to have twice the processing power and up to 9 times faster graphics performance over the A4 chip. While this was one of the fastest and most powerful devices on the market back in 2011, it doesn't come 
come close to the capabilities of modern iPads and iPhones and using it you can definitely feel its age. The iPad's speed, or more fittingly, lack of speed, is thanks to it running a reasonably modern version of iOS. Speaking of software, the iPad 2 runs up to iOS 9, which runs, well, horribly would be an understatement. Apple effectively ruined it, as well as other devices with the A5 chip, including the iPhone 4S, and these devices should have been left to die in peace on iOS 8, where they were slow enough already. While it runs extremely slowly, it is actually somewhat usable for basic tasks, and I honestly think it would make a reasonably decent device for streaming or even to give a kid. Since it was supported until late 2017, it can still download reasonably modern versions of apps, and if you can deal with fairly poor performance, it works well for things such as YouTube and Netflix. The iPad 2 originally ran iOS 4, making it one of Apple's longest supported devices ever, as it received six versions of iOS. It is actually possible to jailbreak and mess around with a lot of cool tweaks, including being able to dual boot iOS 9 with basically any version back to iOS 5. So with all the nitty gritty specs out of the way, is the iPad 2 worth buying in 2020? Well no, it isn't. While it still has its uses nowadays, you should really only be using one if you already have one sitting in a drawer somewhere. By absolutely no means should you go out and buy one of these things today. Looking on ebay.com.au, they usually go for around 30 to 100 Australian dollars, and honestly, I think this is too expensive considering what you're getting. The iPad 3 goes for around the same price, which leads me to ask the question, should you be getting the iPad 3 instead? To which I would answer, no, get the iPad 4. While the iPad 3 has a faster chip, twice as much RAM and quad-core graphics over dual-core, it still runs iOS 9 basically as slow as the iPad 2. This is because it features a retina display with twice as many pixels, which means there's a lot more power required and a lot more strain put on the internals. If you want a cheap iPad, I'd recommend getting the iPad 4. It's much faster having the A6X chip and it runs iOS 10 pretty smoothly and of course iOS 10 features much better support for modern apps. The iPad 4 costs as little as $30 to $50 more than the iPad 2 and with it you're getting far more value for money. Anyway with all that said I think I'm pretty much done here. While the iPad 2 can still be somewhat useful if you have one lying around in the drawer somewhere, whatever you do don't buy one now. Did you ever have the iPad 2? Do you still use one? Let me know down in the comments below. If you found this video interesting maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Also, if you haven't already, you should check out my social media, links for which are down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.